A pretty obvious answer right now. How many enemies does Israel currently have that have a sea border? Well, that would be Lebanon. Israel is looking north and saying, Hezbollah is gaining power, they are an Iranian proxy, and the time is quickly coming that a confrontation with Iran could very well be on the agenda. If there's a wide-scale confrontation with Iran, chances are they're going to strike using their proxies in Lebanon. Now, the quickest way to disable a proxy force in Lebanon is to strike at the capital. If you're going to hit the capital in Lebanon, if you're going to hit Beirut, you can either go over a few hundred miles of ground territory, which is fortified by Hezbollah artillery, their uh, various rocket forces, Forces, their anti-tank missile systems that they've built up for decades, or you can strike from the sea, hitting Beirut directly in a matter of hours with a seaborne landing craft. That's probably the logic here. If you need to confront Iran, you need to disable Lebanon quickly. The quickest way to do that is a deep strike capability. Israel needs landing crafts to do that, and since 1993, Israel really hasn't had landing crafts. Remember, back then it looked like you didn't have that many enemies in the region. Land power had been enough to disable uh, Lebanon before. Land and air power, so you didn't really need to waste money on a naval force that was only good against one regional enemy. That's changing because it's no longer really one regional enemy. It's an entire network of built up and entrenched Hezbollah or Iranian forces, and that's going to require a more widespread tactical solution. Right, and uh, actually it seems like also the military establishment realized that uh, this what's called weapon or this uh, ability was missing conducting this large drill right now, the chariots of fire drill throughout this month where all the aspects of the military are on display, uh, the, the aircraft, the ground troops, uh, intelligence, and uh, then realizing that this, this was missing, no? Yeah, and that's a very common perception in Israel as well. When people say, ask about the Israeli Navy, people are going to laugh and say, oh, it's three canoes that the Coast Guard owns to check for drug smugglers. Not quite that bad. We're only looking at seven interceptor corvettes and eight missile boats. It's not much in the way of a Navy. It exists to intercept anything coming into Israel, but it does not have the ability to project force. There's nothing on there in the form of aircraft carriers to extend your range. There's nothing on there like a battleship to bombard something with artillery. It's a defensive force. Which means that if you want to project force, Israel's only option is air power, and there are limits to what you can hit with air power Certainly. and ground, ground power. Here's the problem with ground power. If you're dealing with a fortified opponent, such as Iran has been building up all around Israel for years now, ground power is going to be very slow and very costly. And part of Israel's military doctrine is understanding that Israel does not have a strategic reserve of forces to draw on. Any loss is a significant loss, which means that you have to be able to project force with minimal losses. That means Israel needs a way to strike deep into enemy territory, and these transport crafts appear to be Israel's new bid to do that. And this isn't a new decision, obviously. This is a procurement has been announced. It means this has been in the works for years, because Israel has recognized for years now that Iran is entrenching. This is hopefully a way that the Israeli forces can project force and can increase their range at a lower cost than their previous models. Right, you, I mean, you talked about casualties, but also speed is crucial for Israel before uh, those doors close, whenever there is in conflict, when there is uh, already the, all the attempts of the mediators to kind of uh, shut down and reach a ceasefire. So objectives need to be reached fast, and this is also another way potentially that they can do that. Ariel Levin-Waldman, thank you very much for that.